Hey everyone, and welcome to ev evidently the tenth week, the tenth week that Electronic Initiation has been performing live on Improv. This is an extremely exciting week for us. We're extremely excited for a number of reasons. Um, probably the most. I mean, there's there's a couple. Of, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I didn't tell my team that I'm going to be talking about a couple of things. Uh, there's like two exciting things happening with the website. One exciting thing that's happening with the website is there's now a message board. This thing is like on fire. People are jumping on this message board. They're leaving messages. They're responding to messages. They're checking out messages. What's that message about? I want to read that message. That's happening a lot. So if you're not involved with that, don't let, don't fall too far behind because right now people can legitimately say, I've read the entire message board. I've read the entire message board. There's not very many times in the message board's history when you have a chance to be able to say something like that. Now is the time when you can get involved and read that entire thing. And then, you know, go ahead and post on it. It's exciting. If people don't start posting on it more, I'll probably take it down. So there is the message board uh, announcement. Additionally, additionally, I have been working on a project to allow uh, people who visit Improv to improvise with Ernie Improv, the robot mascot of Improv. And uh, that's nearing its completion. Who knows if it will be popular or a disaster. There's no way to find out except to wait until it's unveiled. And then finally, for tonight's show, uh, as everyone knows, 24 is back on the air. But uh, this year, they've decided to do something very strange, which is they have taken out 12 of the hours that were written for 24. So there's only 12 hours of 24. It was typically 24 is a continuous 24 hours of programming. This year, only 12. So um, electronic initiation... Big fans of the show 24, big fans of uh, Keith or Sutherland. And uh, we felt that it would be appropriate for us to provide the material that had been um, had been deleted out. So tonight we're not going to be doing improv. Um, it'll feel like improv because a lot of the scenes for this year's season were written in the form of an improv show. So there'll be monologues and scenes following the monologues, but that's what the writers intentionally wanted they wanted it to feel like that. Um, so we'll be almost reciting for you scenes from 24 tonight. Uh, these are scenes that you could have seen in the two-hour uh, season premiere tonight if they hadn't taken those scenes out. All right, so let's bring the rest of our, our cast uh, out of mute. We've got Elizabeth Cavasino, We've got Julia Pistel. We've got Nick Mandillo and Teo Yang. Here's our entire cast, the cast of Electronic Initiation. And um, to get started tonight, of course, we're not going to be using a suggestion because it isn't uh, improv. We'll simply be, you know, uh, working with the monologues that the 24 writers wrote for the material from 24 that would have appeared in this week's episode. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember the first time I saw, I understood what 24 was. I remember the first time like, I got it. Because like, it had been around. You know, 9-11 happened, and then immediately afterwards, Fox has got this, this horrible show. In my mind, when I was like, that sounds like a terrible show, uh, where there's a secret agent, and he's fighting terrorists, and it just seemed so nail on the head, you know? Um, and, you know, now that I describe it, it probably is just nail on the head, right? It's just precisely what you would want to see at that time. It's just that I'm not as smart as I would like to be. So that scratches an itch for me, you know? Uh, eventually I got to it. I think it was in season four. Some, one of my coworkers lent me. He had, at the time, CD technology was a big deal. He had, like, all the seasons of 24 on uh, CDs, and he lent me his CDs. But he was really like, you know, don't damage these CDs. And he was like a very liberal, I thought, sensitive man. And when I watched 24, I couldn't believe how violent it was. I was like amazed at how violent it was and how scary it was. Um, and so I asked him about it when I or turned to CDs. I asked him, I said, Stephen, I know you, like in particular, I've heard you talking about torture a lot at the office. You talk about torture and you say you don't like how much torture our government is involved in. And yet you like this show where like torture is really... Um, is really glorified. And he said to me, this is not a very smart thing he said, but to me it like blew my mind. He said to me a very obvious thing. He said, Terry, 24 is just a TV show. 
it's just a TV show. It's not, no one's actually tortured. And of course, he was right. He's right. It's just a TV show. Uh, Thomas. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. We are, we are introducing a, a, we have introduced a new form of technology, a compact disc, the writable compact disc. And um, it's been brought to my attention that our customers are using these writable compact discs to encourage the viewing of television shows that encourage terrorism. Now, when I invented this technology, mm -hmm. I never imagined it to be used for something that was so poignant for this day and age. Uh, people don't like terrorists. And I, um, I've decided that I'm going to shut down the company despite our record sales. Oh, Bob, you can't do that. You can't, you can't shut down the company. I know it's hard. I know you invented these discs, you know, to record whale songs on and you know, save, save the humpbacks, but people are going to use them how they're going to use them. I just, if I had known that the technology could have been used for evil, I never would have invented it. I, I feel like I have ruined America. I've no, Bob, no, no. It's in the shows that people record. I just hmm. wanted to sing the song of the whales, and instead I have... instead I have caused America to be destroyed. And, and No, don't cry. And don't cry, Bob. It's all right. It's all right. We we got a good five, six whale songs recorded and distributed. Not enough. You think that five or six whale songs could go up against five or six Al Qaeda's? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, maybe if Al Qaeda were to hear the whale song, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe, what would happen? I don't know. No. I, I, there's no chance that we could have. Our customers suddenly stop recording television shows that encourage terrorism and start recording whales to send the terrorists. I just don't see that happening. Well, if you take away the technology, it won't happen. You're right. There will be no possibility for that ever to happen. I would rather us live in the dark ages where we live in, in caves in the desert where we have to construct all of our all of our clothing and all of our tools out of out of the things around us than have any kind of technology that could ruin this country. We cut away from this scene to a desert scene where a duo is setting up their camping tent. 10.11 p.m. Oh, my God. I can't believe we got to the site so late. I know. I mean, well, we were one minute. We were one minute before the cutoff. Yeah. Yeah, they let us in the park. That's that's good at least. But we're going to be freezing by the time we get this 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 tent set up. Yeah, but it's okay. Um, it's okay because you know we have each other, and you know we can always cuddle up. Yeah, that's true. Mary, if I could, I feel like a lot of times you sort of. I mean, and in a very nice way. But um, sometimes you sort of subvert what I'm saying by just by telling me it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I agree it's okay. We, mm -hmm. Neither one of us is dead. And, um, you know, it's okay, so it's okay. But, I mean, you get what I'm saying, right? That, that we were late and now we're going to be freezing tonight. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you're feeling annoyed with me. And uh, that's okay. It's okay to feel aggravated if I subvert you. But I'm not, Nothing wrong with that. I'm, oh, okay. <laughs> You're doing it again. I'm not really that irritated. I'm just sort of saying to you that that's happening a lot. Okay. Like, do, like, okay. So, like this morning, when I uh, when I had that accident, right? Uh -huh. And I accidentally, my clothing went up in in flames, and yeah. I had to stop, drop, and roll. And I was like, you know, throw me the water, throw me the water, throw me the water. And you were just like, that kind of bothered me when you were just like. It's okay. You're not dead. We yeah, I mean, 
you know, you're going to roll it out. We didn't really need to waste the water because it's all, it, you know, stop, drop, and roll. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to all work itself out. Okay. You know? We, we did, definitely didn't know that at that moment. We didn't know. I mean, there's no guarantee with stop, drop, and roll. Yeah, I'm just... I'm, I'm it just, really hurt. I'm sorry, honey. I'm just trying. I'm, you know, I'm trying out these new uh, meditation techniques and trying to just let everything, yeah, let everything go. You know, I might overdo it sometimes. I'm sorry about that. No, you don't need to apologize to me. I'm sorry. I'm just recognizing the new you is what it is. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Where's the backpack with all the food in it? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I, I did leave that. I did leave that at home. I just remembered. You left it. Oh, you just remembered? Yeah. When you brought it up, I, I didn't realize that we left the house without it. Oh my God! That's that's like all the food that we have for our vacation. Yeah, that'll be all right. I mean, yeah. we, can, we can we can get some fishing. We can get some fishing. Oh, I I have the tackle in that bag. I have the, the fishing tackle. We're going to have to go into the... In, we're going to have to leave the park tomorrow and get more equipment. We can just, we can just jump in the river and, and, and uh, try to catch them. I used to do that when I was little. You used to try to catch fish in the river by yourself? You used to yeah. jump in the river well, and try to catch With my dad fish. In, in, in Florida. I mean, with no equipment? Growing up. In Florida? Yeah. yeah you weren't Florida. scared of like alligators. You just jump no, in the river you, when in you Florida? grew up in Florida, that's... That's how it. That's how it is. You just you. You grew up in the river, in the lakes. Are you lying to me right now? I'm not lying to you. It sounds like a lie because it's why would you jump? It? Your dad. Your dad, Ben. Yeah, had Ben. To jump it. it seems wrong. I, that doesn't sound like Ben Craft to me. Ben Craft. The Ben Craft I know would not ask his daughter to jump in a river. We well, cut to he, another he location in the world where it's currently twelve eleven p.m. Uh, we cut to a bedroom and and a and a and a couple t wakes up. Honey, and I, I want to talk to you about something. I, I, know it's, I know it's late, but... So I was, I was having a wonderful dream. You woke me up. What? I'm sure you were having a wonderful dream. It's probably relevant to my inquiry. I, I'm very curious to see how me flying with unicorns is going to be relevant with your inquiry. I... Checked the DVD player today because I was wanting to watch the next disc of the OC, and I noticed that the disc was already in there, and I didn't put it in there, so you must have put it in there. Yes, honey, I'm sk I'm skipping ahead. You're skipping ahead? Yes, you're taking forever to watch it with me. You're never home when I'm home. I just decided, what what's a couple more episodes ahead of you? I thought this was a couple activity. It still can be. It's not like it's a, a mini series where every episode is really that imperative to the one before it. Can we oh, what, you're just gonna feign like you're like you're watching it for the first time when you watch the old episodes with me? Uh, it, you know, it's not. I maybe I'm just tired, but I just I don't care so much about this series as all the other ones, and I kind of want to just get it over with. As all the other ones. Yeah, I mean, Lost was great, and that one, I mean, we had busier, we, we weren't as busy back then, so we could watch it and binge watch it. Lost was great. The Wire was fantastic, watching that with you. I'm just not digging the OC. I just don't care. And you just want to skip ahead? You just want to skip it. We're going to endure through the OC. We're going to do it together. Slowly. Sweetheart. Sweetheart. We've been married for 15 years. We're good. We don't need to do stuff like that anymore. We don't need to sit and watch the same. If you want to watch the OC, just go ahead. I mean, I don't need to watch it with you. I've watched every television show in since we've dated with you. Just I know. I I can't watch I can't watch TV shows by myself. That's that's Ooh. weird. Who will listen to my witty commentary and and funny fun jokes? No one. I, I need an audience. Sweetheart, it's. N remember, remember I don't when like that. I don't like when you do that. I'm so sorry. I. It's late. I just. I don't want to have you, this discussion you, right are now. Are you telling me you fake laugh 
to my at jokes? Your, at your jokes, most of the time I'm faking laughing. Sometimes you have a good quip, but one good quip and, a, and an hour show is fine when you have what, it. Even during the Chris Mika episode when I said, what what, what happened to, to Kwanzaa Miss? You laughed at that joke. I shouldn't have. It was, it was a bad joke, and I'm sorry. I. Who who could that even be? Who could that? It's so late. Hello. Oh hey, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, I, I, the FedEx guy accidentally delivered these uh, DVDs to my apartment, and I just figured if you, if I were you, I would want them right away. So I brought them over, even though it's so late. Thank you. That's, it's, uh, thank you? It's the, I saw what it was. It's the La Femme Nikita series, the complete series of La Femme Nikita from USA to the USA Network in like the, honey, like the late 90s. That was a great show, so I understand if you want to get right to it. Thank you very much, kind sir, for that. Uh, you can go now. It's Ben Kraft is my name. All right, well, Bye. Hi, Ben Crab. Have a good honey, night, Ben. Honey, we I don't want to watch La Femme Nikita with you. I heard there's really great setups for a lot of fun jokes in it. I don't want to watch a TV show and have you just crack jokes. It's not the point of watching TV. If I wanted to hear you talk about shows, I'd ask you questions and we'd talk about it. It's like, why, it's why we don't go to the movies anymore. You're constantly disrupting the audience. Can't I, can't, I can't read a book without you over my shoulders. Pointing at a word and making a joke about it. They're good jokes. They're, you've been fake laughing for 15 years? I have been faking more than laughter. What could you... What? What? Your salmon is dry. What? Oh, no, who man, could it be wow. again? It's so late. It's 10-16. What? Hi, it's Ben Kraft again. I'm so Hello. sorry. You know what? I got a bunch of DVD deliveries uh, recently, and so I've been driving around town. What's what's that? I said, why are they? If they're mailed to us, why are you getting them? I don't know. You have to talk to FedEx about it. Well, in any case, so I got all these full seasons of different. Anyway, you, I'm sorry. Why why do you choose now to give them to us? Thank you, thank you for giving them to I've us. I've got so choose? many. I've got so. I'm going around the entire, like you know, all of. All of this small city that we live in, it's just is, uh, taking me forever, but I'm dead set on doing it. You're like the only person who got two full sets of, of DVDs. So this is uh, the complete, the complete uh, catalog of all Bill Moyers' uh, broadcasts, and have a good time with it. I know I would. So Great. Like going Thank back you. to like the late I, 70s. I Thank you. don't even know who that is. Why He's would I a, want to watch that with you? Fantastic newsman. Fantastic newsman. All right. Well, uh, you have DVDs of the you. news. Yes. I, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know who he was either until I read about him on the internet. He apparently does a lot of gaffes. He made a lot of mistakes while on air, and there are great setups for punchlines. If you wanted to watch funny news, just watch The Daily Show. Oh, why would I try to be funnier than Jon Stewart? That's ridiculous. We, try to be we cut away from this scene. We cut away from this scene to a TV studio. There we go. There we go. Uh huh. This base will help you not reflect too much when we turn the lights on. Thank you so much. I'm a little. I'm a little nervous. So, anything that's going to make me look better is great. Well. You've been doing a great job in your first week, so I, I don't think you need to be quite so nervous. Well, I just, you know, like, I don't really want to reveal too much of my real self. You know what I mean? I want it to be very clear that this is not me. Even though it's a reality show, it's not me. You know what I mean? So it just yeah. makes me, I don't know. It's stressful. How are you, I'm, I didn't know you were doing that. How are you trying to do that? I'm just, you know... It's a show about my house, but I'm just kind of taking on a character that I wanted to see a show about. So it's really barely, you know, it's my house, but it's not me. Let me get underneath your chin, okay? Let me get underneath your chin. Yeah. Uh, well, here's the thing about that. I mean, that's an interesting idea, mm -hmm. but um, people don't know who you are from before this series. 
then you're not you're not famous. So I, I don't think people will clue in on the fact that you're playing a fictional character. I think they'll just think that this is who you are. Well, yeah, that's fine. And then my own identity will be, you know, preserved to myself. Oh, you know, so like, it would be like a secret. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So like, I, you know, in the show, I say that I love cats, and I had all these cats that died, and, you know, there's pictures of them. Those are just sample pictures from frames. Those aren't... I have no pets. You got all those cat pictures? I didn't... I've never even seen a sample cat picture in a frame. Normally it's yeah. like a couple or a family. Yeah, you can get them in bed, bed and bath, yeah. Get out of town, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Could you lift I up mean, the back of your hair for me so I can just... Sure. Uh, Sarah, just to let you know, it's uh, currently 10, 20, uh, 7.20, I'm sorry, 7.20 p.m., so you'll be on in just uh, one minute. Okay, great, great. Well, mm -hmm. um, am, I, am I almost good to go, Leslie? Am I, yeah. How am I looking? Yeah, you're looking. You're looking great, Ed. Do you want me to do something to make you look less like yourself? Yeah. How How did you know? You know, well, I'd love a couple of moles. That would be okay. awesome. Sure. I mean, a mole is easy. That's an easy. That's mm -hmm. easy to do. Well, I know we only have a minute, so. Okay. All right. You know what I could do is I could maybe make it look like there was like an accident. That okay. Your face had been in like an accident. Okay, no. between last week and this week. Sure. No, no. It, I mean, maybe I, I guess if you heal very quickly, but I'm thinking like something that would be like a long-term, like you've been hiding a disfiguring wound kind of accident. Okay. Like you're make, maybe like you're missing part of your jaw or something. Would you, would you want that? Do you think you could do that in less than a minute? I can try. I, you know. Okay. <laughs> Give yes. it the college try. All right, well, uh, if you could, just show me your jawline. Okay. okay. Here. Oh, there we go. All right, Sarah. Uh, we're, oh, wow, we're a minute late. So uh, we'll, let's get you started on the scene. Um, I, I don't know if you read through the script, but it's, uh, it's a remake of Some Like It Hot, and you'll be playing the Marilyn Monroe character. Okay. All right. All right, let me just take you over. And um, this is the scene where you meet the two cross-dressing dudes who are running away from the mob. Okay. And action. Oh, my jaw. Oh, God. Don't look at it. You two are so, so beautiful. Uh, oh, well, you know, thank I don't you. want to see my disfigured face. Thank you. You have an like, interesting choice of makeup. Uh, it's, it's not a choice. It's a reality that I live with all the time. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like uh, Vera's work. Uh, well, okay. Can we cut? Can we cut, cut here? Cut, 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 cut. What? What? What is wrong with your face? Where's the makeup guy? Where's the makeup uh, guy? Hello. Hi. What? What did you do to her face? Uh, well, I mean, there there are so many things that we're trying to accomplish here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I think that what I did was was right. Because we were talking about having her seem different than she typically is, which this accident I think does that. Do you agree? We're trying to remake some like it hot and recapture the beauty of Marilyn Monroe. What are you trying to say with a scar on her face? Well, just because it's also a reality show about her house, so it's like those two. Are, that's like some high concept stuff. That it's well, right. some like it hot and also the reality show element. I think people might get confused and think it's actually her. At least that's what her concern is. Um, but this scar makes it clear then that it's it, it, that it's a character she's playing. You know what yeah, we I could do? Can I just offer a suggestion? We could remaster some like it hot so that Marilyn Monroe's character has a disfiguring scar down the side of her face. You know what? That's the kind of idea we need to in this in this modern. That's you know what that makes it modernized. You're right. You're right. Wait. Across the country to this uh, to Paramount Pictures, where the president of Paramount just received word instantaneously that one of his films was going to be remastered without his permission. I don't like it. I don't like it, and I want to know who's responsible for this. Well, um. 
I'm responsible for it. I'm uh, I'm I'm Jeff. You were in charge of that reality show, and you you were supposed to remake some like it hot, not remaster the original. Well, we wanted to promote the reality show. And what better way than to remaster it? And we put it out at the same time, and it, and it, you know, we're gonna strike while the iron is hot and sell. I, you know, I can't. I can't have this happen. Do you understand how many copies of that movie are already out? Some like it hot is a classic, and a lot of people own it. And I got word recently that people are burning copies of it on the do on the CDRs. Now, yeah. how are those people who have CDRs, how are they going to get the remastered version? If they, I, this is, it's, I'm just very upset. Well, those people are not going to get the remastered version. Those people who use CDRs, they're out of luck. You uh, understand how the movie business works. If you got a movie and then all of a sudden someone releases a different version of that movie, mm -hmm. outrage happens. That's how disasters happen. That's how murder happens. I'm not going to be responsible for murder, not on my watch. Uh, we cut away from this, and we zoom all the way back to the middle of the country, back to Ben, the guy who receives all the FedEx films. Okay, uh, Ben? Hi. Hi, it's me again. I've got a bunch more packages for you here. Oh, my gosh. Ben, oh my ben God. it's USPS. I also got a bunch of packages for you. Uh, okay, bring them in, but this is the kind of thing that causes disasters. These types of yeah. videos cause real disasters. Ben, ben, we've got remastered versions of a whole bunch of Hollywood classics, and uh, we're just going to need you to hand them out. Okay, well, I will do it. I will do it, but I'll say this, okay? That kind of video is going to cause outrage, all right? Benghazi. That's Benghazi, essentially. Benghazi was caused by a video, and and to have all these videos that have been doctored, I, it makes me very tense. I'll do my best. Listen, Ben, that's why FedEx and UPS and USPS, we all need you, okay? You've got the nice, kind touch to distribute the films, all right? You're the guy. We all nice bring eyes. our stuff to You have nice eyes. You have um, nice in a gentle manner, okay? I I spent a lot of time as a younger man diving into alligator infested rivers with my daughter. And uh, I guess I just came to an understanding about life that, you know, it's fleeting and it's not worth getting upset about things. So, okay, I'll deliver your videos. I'll deliver them for you. We cut to the married couple who watch movies together. Honey, I just wanted to watch. Huey's Big Adventure by myself, and I just saw that you recorded your own jokes over the over the movie soundtrack. It's good commentary. It's good commentary. You can't do that to movies. Do you understand how the kind of disaster that we would face if you are are, are copyright infringing upon these films? You don't belong on these films. I sense a lot of anger and a lot of resentment right now, but I know what will fix our marriage. This new remastered edition of Some Like It Hot remixed with a, a reality TV show. No, Don't I, shake your head I, at it. No, I, I haven't even watched that show at all, and I never even saw Some Like It Hot. I can't start out with the reality version remake with your audio commentary at the first time. I can't do that. My head will explode. You don't need the original versions. You just need mine. I need... <laughs> okay, so we, we cut into the movie um, with a climactic scene with the, uh, the whole cast of Some Like It Hot with the commentary peppered in throughout. Okay, guys. Stop looking at my face. I'm beautiful... Marilyn Monroe, and you know what? Some like it hot. That's that's what I think about this situation. And this was here in the in the layout of the movie where we actually lost most of our budget and funding because our producer pulled the plug on us. So you can see the budgets get really low, low, low budget. We cut to the married couple. Honey, you're not even telling jokes. You're making up commentary. What? Ben, what, Ben? 
Ben, ben, ben what do you have? What do you have for me? Well, I've got a bunch of videos for you, but I've also got videos for people on your block. I'm hoping you could maybe watch these. I mean, if you want to, you could watch these videos first and then disperse them. So, like, I've got a lot of stuff because I've just been getting now FedEx. You know, oh, I could uh, really expand. Yes. Honey, honey, I could really expand my audience if I record Hello. over all of these movies. Hello? Is anybody home? Hello? Yeah. 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 Hi. Uh, I received word that you... I've been getting a lot of, a lot of movies on on CDRs, but I'm just wondering if perhaps you might want to listen to this, to these CDs. Wait, whale, whale songs. These are the songs of the sea, the song of the beluga whale. There's I no like... audio commentary necessary. If I just trust that if you listen to this, this might save the country from a disaster happening. You know, why not? Why not? I'm just going to put this into my CD player right here. This would honestly be better with some jokes. All right, so that's our show, folks. That's our show. That's our show. Um, uh, so those are the scenes. Those are the scenes they didn't want you to see from this year's 24. Shocking, really, when you consider it, because it bumps into themes of terrorism. You know, there was a, clearly that, that uh, film producer was worried that if his uh, film was remastered, there would be outrage. Um, we saw we saw a married couple that likes to watch a lot of movies. I'd like to watch a scene like that in 24. You know, just like, show me a little bit. I, I guess this is what I'd say to Fox. Show me some of the people who are going to be killed by the terrorism, you know? And, and, like, you know, people who are everyday people watch a lot of television. People who are everyday people go camping and have problems. People who are everyday people you know, uh, have jobs on reality TV shows with confusing premises that, uh, you know, uh, make everyone feel angsty. So, like, those are real people in your scenes. You wrote great scenes. I would just say include them in 24. Also, you should check out Gilda. Uh, they performed at 9.30 tonight, but their set will be up for a bunch more hours. I think we're just going to start leading these guys up. So you can check them out in the future as well. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This has been an improv broadcast. Have a great night. Oh, and I should say, this is Elizabeth Cavacino, Julia Pistel, Nick Mandillo, and Teo Yang. Go ahead, who's screaming out in high voice? Let's scream out again. <laughs>